Hey, how's it going everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm joined with Harley Sealbinder. What's up, Harley? How are you today? How's it going, Brad? I'm doing good. So Harley is very interesting. He's got a business online that he's been starting while he's been in college, and he is helping men and women make some big changes. And to be honest, it's something that I think a lot of people are probably scared to talk about and even more scared to talk about online where people can see what they talk about. So Harley, give me a summary of how you're helping people right now. Maybe the, the people are watching, somebody's watching that you could actually help by opening their mind to some things that you are doing that's working well. Sure. Well, thanks for the opportunity, Brad. So currently I help men quit pornography, specifically men in relationships. That's been the most common person. Normally people in a relationship might be struggling, coveting other people or decreasing intimacy. And from what I've found in, in my experience as well, as soon as pornography is removed from your life, there's less distractions. And I think there's so much more room for growth, personal growth, relational growth, spiritual growth, any of those growths. And so what I do is I have, I have a few different communities. One is free. One is kind of medium tier and one is kind of high tier the free community anyone can join there's lots of trainings and and then the the higher tiers have more accountability i think the key here is like having more people checking in on you and a lot of people might watch videos on how to quit porn but they're never having the conversation with anyone like you know you could watch a video on how to quit smoking but if you never tell anyone i really want to stop cigarettes it's never really going to do much the videos might give you some motivation but not that accountability that i think is really key so i guess that's yeah. kind of how i help people in a nutshell accountability is huge i mean because i could just see i love the smoking example that that might be more relatable or drinking drinking example yeah no one knows i'm trying to quit drinking like next time I go out with my friends, I can have a drink because they don't even know I'm trying to quit. There's no accountability there. Exactly. So why did you like get it? How did you get into this? Because I can imagine like I'd be nervous to talk about it. It's kind of like a, um, you know, a word that no one talks about or dives into. So what kind of what made you get started and wanting to help other people with this? I wanted to first off, conf well, be certain that it was something that I would not have to deal with anymore. It was something that it ruined my previous relationship pretty bad. Like it just, it stained it. It made it so that I, she could tell I wasn't very grateful for her. Cause I was, I was always scanning other women. It just kind of put me in this mode of like, it's okay to covet other women. It's okay to, well, not appreciate the woman in front of you. And she actually broke up with me a year and a half ago because of it. Therefore, I kind of hit rock bottom and I actually masturbated multiple times to porn that week. And then I was like, all right, I need to make a change here. I don't want to, this to happen in my next relationship. To me, like I think a relationship is like one of the most important things. And it's like I just went and tarnished it through my own actions. And it's like I can change that. Therefore, let me start making some videos on it and let me see – how I can help because there's so many men out there that struggle with it. And like you said, it's so taboo and I've been making videos for a while and I'm always kind of a unique guy. So it's like, well, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> Bulls jump into the pool and I'm going to be that guy who can help. So one thing I've been really working on is self-awareness. So it sounds like you had really strong self-awareness, not when it first happened, but after a week um, after it happened, you're like, wow, this is something I messed up but I can fix it. So that's really motivating to hear someone else having self-awareness like that, but then actually taking action on it is super important, right? I know you're in a relationship now. What's different now with your relationship compared to the last one with after you remove that? And maybe this could be motivating for somebody watching or listening like, hey, you might be fighting with whoever you're in a relationship with. You might be arguing, you might be depressed. You might be feeling a certain way, but if you, if you change, I always say, if you remove something in your life, it'll improve something in your life. So maybe tell mm -hmm. us what's different and what's improved since you've changed that with the new relationship. I would say just for to start off like a personal benefit of 
not having to feel ashamed, not having to feel like I'm living a lie, not having to feel as if I have secrets, not having to feel like, oh, dang, if she, if she checks my phone, am I going to be worried? These kind of like feelings of honestly self-respect and self-trust and and I guess that leads to trust in the relationship. But yeah, just being able to feel secure and someone if someone asks, so what'd you do today? And the real answer is, well, for an hour and a half, I was looking at porn and then for the next hour, I was just kind of dwelling on it. And so it's like, you have to make stuff up when people ask. And it's like, I don't, as, as soon as it's removed, I can now tell people what my day is like without having to include porn because it's no longer a part of it. So that's a nice self-improvement part. A nice relationship improvement is she has trust over me. And it's not because I'm so, so disciplined. It's honestly because I've built this community of guys that I meet with every single week. Like it's these guys that have joined my community and now it's like, I have to be a good example. I, when I check my calendar, I see that there's three more events that I have, you know, for the rest of this week about quitting porn. Therefore, why would I watch porn? There's no need. I, I you know, it's so like, that's what I want to provide for other people, an opportunity to have these conversations because, you know, most people keep it inside and, and then maybe it explodes in a relationship and they don't know what to do. They don't, they don't know where to go. They feel alone. It's just, it's a horrible situation. And so I think everyone is stronger together. And that's why I, I'm such a huge fan of community connections. I love this podcast name, Relationship Marketing. I think life is yeah. all about relationships. I, I love this. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. I, I'm so glad that you did that. And I love how you touched on the community part because you're right. Because if you were doing that and then trying to coach people not to do it, like I could imagine your business probably will never be successful or grow. Not that they know, but I just think the moral aspect of it is, you know, God's not going to let a business grow that, you know, has sin in it anyway. So mm. um, I think, I think that's huge that you, that community is helpful. Now with the people that join your community, um, do you call them out? Like, are you like, Hey man, I know you messed up. Like, but I got your back. Let's, how can we do this to improve it? Are you pretty open mm -hmm. with them about that and making sure they're accountable every time you talk to them? That's a good question. Normally there's a bit of a form they can fill out, like how their goals are going, et cetera. And normally if someone makes a mistake or relapses, it's not like this, wow, you did a, you did a bad thing. It's like, obviously he did. Let's figure out the root. Like, let's try to understand why do you think this happened? Oh, today I was just so irritated after work and I was just stressed out about a lot of things. My girlfriend said something annoying and I just, I, I needed to blow off some steam. And it's like, all right, you didn't like, I'm not going to condescend Everyone you for that. Mistakes. Let's, yeah, let's try to figure out, all right, next time you're a little heated at work and you're irritated from something at work, what could we do differently that could potentially set you up for a better solution you know let's let's dive into what we can do better next time and you know and props for even speaking out because you know i think so much of the solution is just self-recognition looking inward and being like oh it was it i made this mistake because of this and this therefore next time i'm feeling this way let's try to engage in something else and I know that Harley's going to ask me about it next week. Therefore, I have even more reason to try to implement this new strategy. And it's just this, you know, cycle of improvement, you know, made a mistake. Let's revise. Let's improve. And let's not have any judgment because we all know what it's like to fail in this dimension. So, yeah, I guess that's the answer oh, for that. I like that. So, okay, you messed up. But then you find out why they messed up. Now, and then you help them fix why they messed up so it doesn't happen again it's like oh you messed up don't do it again but they messed up for a reason so you're getting mm -hmm. to the root of the problem and you know i'm sure there's multiple times they mess up for different reasons so maybe there's four or five different roots that you're helping them go cut those limbs off so maybe they get those five things that make them you know revert back to doing it again i think that's really cool that you're able to go back and not just quit. Okay. You're good because obviously you got to make changes in all kinds of different areas. What about, um, so I see a lot of times you you're posting on social media, you're posting videos, all these helpful tips, um, which a lot of times this goes for business too. 
I can give somebody all the tips in the world for free over and over and over, but nobody, 99% of people won't actually go implement, implement them. It's not until they join your community or pay for your service where now they're accountable. Now they're actually going to go um, make sure they follow through with that. What is some marketing and some, some like, what are you doing now that's working best for you to grow? We do have a lot of business owners that watch this and listen in. So maybe, you know, I know you do videos. I know you do posts, mm -hmm. anything that's working really well and maybe something you've tried that doesn't work at all. Yeah, I've, I've tried a lot of different things. I, you see that I make a clip every single day and I post like a, a tweet every single day or a tweet shot on Instagram. And for a while, I kind of didn't fully know what I was doing. And I'm still, of course, trying to figure it out. Like, what's the best way to convey a message of empathy and, you know, care and providing value without asking too much? I think for a while, I was almost asking for too much, like follow, you know, save yeah. this post, comment. And like, while that's fine and, you know, it's good for engagement if they do that, you know, when sometimes maybe some of my videos were a little too salesy recently, I kind of tried to make an entire switcheroo where I built this free community and this very kind of cheap community. And my goal in posting these, this free community and this other community and all online is now to be like, all right, how did I do it? Let's just go back to the basics again and truly give them step-by-steps completely for free and just like give, give, give. And like, I've recently not been trying to ask as much for a follow or ask as much to DM because, you know, it seems so it's, they can smell the, maybe the disparity or the, like you know, they can sell, they can tell that it's a sales type video. And it's like, no, I need Definitely. to switch it to like a value giving video. And that's what I love that you do on your YouTube as well. And your Twitter, like I just see all this awesome value and it's like, dang, I totally want to implement his systems, you know, so I've, I've just been trying to implement the That's give, huge. give, give strategy. So I've been working on I that. love that you started doing that for two reasons. Like one, you know, we just, I just mentioned it. 99% of people will see all the value and never implement it. So you're not missing out on money. Those people aren't going to do it anyways. They're only mm. going to actually do it if they, pay, if they pay you. So I tell every business owner, give everything for free, knowing that, no one's going to go do it. Maybe there'll be a small 1% that will then us uh, entrepreneur that's, you know, takes a step forward. They'll go implement it. That's great. He'll tell people about you. But the main thing is they actually have to commit to you to actually see the action. Then the other thing there that I think a lot of business owners, if you're watching this and listening to this right now is your business, Harley, nobody wants to leave you a comment like you or follow you <laughs> like they're, other followers will see that they left a comment. Their girlfriend might see that they followed you. It's like, true. why is he commenting on Harley's post? I have a, mine's not as bad as, or as hard as yours, but a lot of business owners out there, your audience, your potential customers don't always want to comment and like your stuff. But what I do get, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you get this, is a private message or a mm -hmm. private email. Hey, mm -hmm. I've been watching your stuff. Um, I'm really interested. You've helped out. How can I join your community? So don't get discouraged by the likes and the comments and the followers. You've got people watching secretly. So oh, keep yeah. knowing that you've got a hundred people watching, wanting to like, wanting to comment, but they won't. And that will someday, hopefully someday within a week, a month, a year, I've had somebody reach out three years. Hey, I've watched all your videos for the last three years. I'm ready to become a client. I'm like, dude, you haven't liked or commented anything. I don't even think mm -hmm. you follow me. He's like, yeah, but I've been watching. So don't get discouraged. All, everyone watching like Harley would be the first one to get discouraged because no, he's, his business is the least likely to get these engagements. So if you're getting a couple, like you're doing better than Harley <laughs> and, and no fault to you. So oh, stay sure. positive, stay encouraged. Mm -hmm. I always think, Hey, I only got two likes, but I know a couple hundred people saw this. So when they're ready, they'll reach out, they'll DM. So I think that's really important, which by the that's way, talking about, yeah. do you see that by the way, before mm, I move totally. on? Totally. Oh yeah. That's a great point. Honestly. Yep. Yeah. Very well yep. said. Yep. So it's not about the likes. It's about the met the private messages, right? Mm -hmm. What a, is there? So I know there's, there's only fans out there. There's so mm. much crap online. Of course it's been there for a long time since the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
so there's more and more and more of temptations. But I am starting to see younger men stick up for it and talk against it. I mean, one easy one that not everyone is relates to or trusts is Andrew Tate. He's one of the most sure. popular people. He talks bad about it. He says, you are a wuss if you watch or engage with this stuff. You're not a real man if you sure. are easily tempted, which I think that's great. You know, love or hate them, that message, I'm starting to mm. see more and more. For you, is there any other businesses or any other entrepreneurs doing what you're doing? Yeah, there's there's a... I happen to find a community of other guys that are doing it similar. Some people, okay. uh, yeah, there's there's a good mix of people. Some that offer just kind of like a course, other people that offer mentorship, other people that seem to do both or yeah, every single person's different. But yeah, I found a niche of probably 15, 10, 10 to 15 people actually. Not a lot then because other businesses, there's thousands of yeah honestly yeah right? <laughs> yeah what 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 do you think makes you different compared to the others because honestly i've never seen anyone um do what you do so there's not mm. many well i guess what could potentially make me different is i have experience like a lot of quitting porn coaches are like that's their high that's their main thing quitting porn like you know what else did you do what else do you do for me like maybe i don't promote it much but like I've had a podcast for two years before I even started this thing, talk, talking, interviewing all kinds of people. I've run a cleaning business in the town I grew up in. I also go to engineering school. I, you know, I'm very into fitness. Like I, I'm pretty well rounded, and because I've had that podcast for so long, I have some sense of articulation. I have some people skills. I grew up kind of managing people. Like I have a. I don't know if that I'm not trying to brag it. Maybe what sets me apart is potentially like this road away from porn thing that I've built. This honestly is just step one of the process. You quit porn. Great. Now Harley can help you get in better shape. Potentially Harley can help you in your relationship. Potentially Harley can help you get better grades in school. Harley can help you start a service business. You know, like I have a lot of potential other skills that now, like I actually started a one guy quit porn and then he wanted to start a business. So I started mentoring him on how to start a business, how to start posting on Instagram. And like, you know, I just awesome. happen to have, you know, some other skills, but I'm sure some of those other coaches have some of those skills too. So yeah. I'm not sure what fully sets me apart besides the fact that I think I post the most consistently. I, I make a clip every day. That's just me. You know, it's, I don't repost someone else's stuff. I notice a lot of other quitting porn people just post the same kind of memes oh i saw that meme oh you just stole it from that guy and it's like yep. it's not very creative it's like i like being kind of unique in me so i think it's the personality the relationship you build and maybe it goes all the way back to that self-awareness thing like you are finding shortcuts or you're finding tricks or you're failing and then making changes in all these things so you have the experience but you've also been self-aware to see what doesn't work, fix it, make it right. And then being able to build relationships with these people and then help them. I think you have a passion for helping people. So yeah. I think that that's really cool. Um, and keep going with that. If you're watching this right now, okay, let's say we've got somebody watching this right now, Harley. They're feeling it. Like they're like, I struggle with this. Um, what am I feeling? Am I feeling depressed, sad, unmotivated? Um, what am I feeling to make me want to reach out and actually hire and work with you. Yeah. I think the first thing you kind of have to do is do some introspection because like ask yourself, like what are your real reasons for quitting? Like, Oh, like I've talked with some people and then it's like, we kind of get to the root and it's like, well, pornography isn't actually your main problem. It's something else. But like diving in and trying to figure out asking yourself like the big why, like, why is pornography impacting you? Has it has it hurt your, you know, your physical self, your your mental health, your spiritual health? Has it has it well, how how has it impacted the people around you? You know, start asking some questions like that. Write them down. See what you think of the answers. Like if you think that, oh dang, this all these answers kind of do point to pornography being a big problem. All right, great. I'd say that's step one. Uh I would say step two potentially is, well, this is kind of like my classic framework. It's kind of figure out why you would want to quit potentially, write them okay. down, 
even record a video of yourself doing it. So then it's like kind of reality. Like, oh, I just made a video on my phone of all the reasons why I don't want to watch porn, why it's hurting me, why it's hurting other people. Now that you've done that, share it with someone, whether it's me, you can totally fine or share it with a trusted friend. Doing that alone can truly just give you that sense of power over that addiction. No longer is it just hidden in the back of your memory. It's now exposed, light is on it, et cetera. And, you know, there's a lot of strategies that I could help you with potentially on once you understand why you want to quit. But I would just say, like, figure out your why. Like, why is it impacting you? And then share that with someone, you know? And if that is me, great. I, Yeah, so I have a lot of different not- tricks and tips that, but go ahead. I didn't fully answer your question, I guess, but no, I think I didn't even get to the root of it, but why sh- it give me a summary or reason why somebody should quit. I think that maybe that's where we should have started is why should you quit? And then what do you do next? So you got what to do mm. next, but just give me like, why should somebody quit? Mm. It really, honestly, it's not even a simple answer because I've noticed it's different for every person. A lot, of, Some people have like deep, deep moral qualms with watching porn. Other people have almost none of that. They more are like, dang, I just don't like that I'm so un, well productive because of pornography. It wastes so much of my time. Other people say, oh, I just, I feel like it's pulling my time away from the gym. Some people say it's making me so depressed. Other people say... I can't sleep at night because I need to jerk off to even fall asleep or, you know, it can really be, I've seen so many reasons, you know, all kinds of reasons. One person's like, I'm starting to become addicted to thinking about my sister, you know, or like all kinds of crazy stuff. So I, yeah. I guess big Probably reasons. Probably gets worse and worse and yeah. worse and more. Yeah, it does. And so. Oh, you don't, don't have to share the name. Ahead. You don't have to share the name, but is there somebody that you can, um, give us a quick summary of maybe that you've worked with that has mm. changed and you've seen it um, come back and seen a difference. Yeah. So there's this guy who joined the program right when it was kind of new. He was, he had a fiance that was saying to him, Hey, I need you to remove porn from your life. Otherwise I can't marry you. And so he Good. decided to join my program and within the first day of joining he didn't even watch porn once because like it's like he finally decided to take that stand now he's he meets with harley and a few of my other leaders each week and as soon as you join like my top tier road away from porn you have access for life for these meetings and so like i get to check in with him every week even if it's for a small amount of time because the community's grown i he can just say to me like yeah, man, it's going so well. The wedding is just about, if the wedding is now planned, we're getting that all sorted out. Whereas before they were almost going to call off the wedding because of it. And so, you know, their relationship has improved and that just makes me really happy because I don't, I wouldn't want anyone to fall into what I did a year and a half, two years ago. So that's an example, I guess. Man, that's huge. Congratulations. That probably makes you even more motivated to keep helping people. Yeah. Yeah, I might as well. All right. So you told me why I should quit. I'm feeling the feelings like I need to quit. Um, I'm private. I don't want to tell anyone or leave you a comment on your social media post, (laughs) but I want to reach out and I need your help. Where should I go? And where are you the most active at on social media for me to start learning some of these tricks? So my Instagram is my most active platform. It's where I post the most amount of content and it's the easiest, well, at least it's one of the easiest features for DMing. I know Twitter's pretty easy too, but for me, Instagram is the main thing I use. And what I do is if someone reaches out to me, I first off send them to my free community. Well, first off, I ask them some questions. You know, why are you feeling this way? What are you struggling with specifically? Then I send them to the free community that I've built. It's on school, S-K-O-O-L. You've probably heard of it. So I have that community. And then I specifically send them trainings from that that specifically apply to their situation. And therefore, then they check it. Sometimes after that, they're like, dang, that might have solved my problem. And then maybe for a week or two, it worked. But then it they kind of lost that motivation. Then they potentially can come to me again. But you know, it just depends on the person. But Sometimes people are like, I'm just ready to book that call and join your community. And so then, yeah, I guess the way into the 
big community is through a call with me and talking about yep. plans and, you know, results and things like that. So yeah, I guess Instagram DM joining my free community. That's a good way to just kind of learn about how I help people and hopefully just get a lot of value from it. So yeah. And if you're watching or listening, don't at least give them one comment, like give them a heart at least. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. Know, I probably wouldn't back in the day either. <laughs> it's such a <laughs> taboo topic, but you know, go okay. change and then come back and leave a comment on all his posts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what, I'll, which yeah, by the way, a lot. Yeah, exactly. After they join, then they'll leave comments. <laughs> yep. Go change, go make a, ch go make one change, right? If you remove something, it'll improve something. So, um, you might not know what you're missing out on if you have that in your life. So why don't you try it? Mm. Um, by the way, we're on YouTube. We're on podcasts. We are, we'll post this on our blog as well. So Harley, I will put all your links below the video, the audio, the blog. So if you're watching this, go check them out. Give Harley a follow, leave him a comment and um, reach out to him if you need help with this also. Harley, great job on everything you're doing. Keep growing the business and keep helping people. Thanks, Brad. You as well. You're an inspiration to so many people. I appreciate that. Thanks everyone for watching and joining in. We'll see you on the next uh, podcast. Talk to you soon.